Out of the box, LogStorm can correlate events from a multitude of different security devices. There may be some cases, however, where a device you would like to parse messages from is not natively supported. This may include devices or software proprietary to your organization. If this is the case, LogStorm provides a device builder tool. This utility can create a parser for any device that uses syslog to forward event information. As you can see in my candidates window, I have a few unconfirmed devices, one of which has not been detected by a parser. In this video, I'm going to walk through Device Builder so that we can parse messages for this device. We'll start by opening the Device Builder, which can be found in the Tools menu under the Advanced subsection. This window has sections which will allow us to capture logs, create regular expressions, and categorize the event types. First, we'll give our device a unique vendor and product name. Since our unknown device is already forwarding syslog messages to LogStorm, we can capture those events and use them in Device Builder by clicking the Capture button. This will open the Real-Time Raw Message Viewer. We can hit play here and see the real-time events as they come across the wire. Using the filter criteria, I can opt to see only the events that come from the IP address of our new device. I will pause my feed, highlight a handful of the incoming messages, and save them to the clipboard by right-clicking Copy. Now that I have these events, I can close the real-time monitor. In the Device Builder window, I can click on the Paste button and display those events here. If I accidentally copied over any unwanted messages, I can go ahead and highlight them in this window and click the Delete button. Now I have three messages that I want to create parse rules for. If I highlight a message, it will appear on the bottom half of the screen in the regex1 tab. I'll select the first message and create a regular expression to match it. Note that I am grouping unique variables in parentheses, such as the alarm identifier and the interface label. I will use these groupings to parse the information out for correlation later on. A few things will happen once I'm done writing my regex. First, the groupings I created are now in bold on the regex1 tab. Additionally, the regex column for this raw message has a 1 in it, indicating that it's a match for regex1. Finally, my regex has a check mark next to it, meaning it is a valid regex statement. Since everything looks in order, I can go ahead and map logstorm fields to the variables in the raw message. The first field listed is event message signature. For this message, that's group 1, the firewall underscore if down alarm. Once I select group 1, you'll notice that the variable will appear right next to the field. That way you can double check your work. Since the other fields aren't in this particular message, I can remove them all and then add one for the interface variable. When I click the plus button, all available mapping fields for LogStorm are listed. I simply need to select the appropriate field. Again, I'll select the grouping number for the variable we want in this LogStorm field. In our case, it'll be 2 for ETH2. I'll repeat this process once more for my third variable, which here is username. Once the attributes have been set, I need to categorize this event type for use in correlation. By double-clicking on the message signature and using Ctrl-C, I can copy that message. Then, in the Signature Categorization window, I will right-click and select Paste. All of the categories LogStorm uses to normalize events are listed here to my right. I just need to highlight my device message signature and then select the appropriate category to describe it. Here, a network interface being down can be placed in the healthstatus.informational.link.down category. Once I'm satisfied with this parsed message, I just need to verify that regex1 is the event match I am looking for. I can double-click on the required cell and enter in 1 to confirm that match. Now I can move on to the remaining raw messages I would like to parse. These next two messages are similar enough that one regular expression can match them both. I will highlight message 2 and click the plus button next to my first regex to add a new parser line. I can now create a filter matching messages 2 and 3, again grouping important variables in parentheses like the IP addresses and port numbers. 
Once the regex is valid, I can map the message variables to the logstorm attribute fields as we did before. For IP addresses and port numbers, the dropdown contains special address and port grouping labels that we'll need to use. Again, if we need to add or remove field attributes, we can use the plus and minus buttons located next to the fields. Like our first message, we need to copy the message signature and categorize it. In this case, however, we will have two signatures to copy, since our last two messages match only this one regular expression. First, I will use the firewall deny and categorize that. Then I will highlight the third message and do the same thing for the firewall accept signature. I am using the same normalization categories as our built-in firewall parsers. They have deny falling under the informational.acl.deny category and accept under informational.acl.allow. I will double check my category mappings one last time and then validate the raw messages I've just completed by entering the number 2 in the required cells for the accept and deny messages. Now we have parsers for all of the captured syslog messages. If you wish, you can save these parser rules in an XML for future editing. If you'd like to start using the new parser right away, go ahead and click the Submit button. A confirmation window will appear where you can click OK to continue. We can now go back to our unidentified candidate from the beginning of this video and manually select the product we just created in Device Builder. This will confirm the device and place it in our assets list. It will now parse and categorize messages based on our regular expression mappings. Those events will also be analyzed by the Rules Engine for correlation. If I wish to make changes to a custom device, I can go to the Tools menu and under Advanced select Manage Custom Devices. A list of all submitted devices will appear, where I can right-click them and select Edit to perform additional tuning. Hopefully this video has provided you with the basic knowledge needed to work the Device Builder utility. As always, should you need further assistance or guidance getting started creating your own custom device, please do not hesitate to contact us at Black Stratus Support.